work done. Ah, the heck. Paper lads never even knew such words when I was a girl. What are they doing still hanging round here? Any road has gone eight o'clock. Waiting to deliver papers, being paper lads. Should have been round and back again hours since, if they was properly organised. Yes, Hilda. Want to get out of bed a bit sooner, don't you, if you've got a job to do? Not that it's any of your business, Hilda, but I didn't get into flame in bed till after three o'clock. Yeah, you look it. Well, you can't go burning the candle at both ends, you know. Not when you get past a certain age. Don't tell me, let me guess. I'm past it. Oh, well, past it, yeah. Well, it's no good kidding ourselves. We're still young and lovely, is it? <laughs> what was you doing till that time, any road? Working? That's right. Singing? Yes, Hilda, singing. What else would I be working at at three o'clock in the morning? Well, I don't know, do I? I mean, the only time I ever went to one of your clubs, there was a brawl. Would you excuse me? Will I go and put some clothes on my body? Oh, certainly. I'll mind the shop for you, if you like. Not necessary. Miss Riley will be along any minute. Who? Oh, uh, her. Yes, mm. sir. And if she'd been here when she should have been, I wouldn't be studying me Gansey, making stupid excuses to nosy women whose business it wasn't in the first place. <laughs> hey, read any good books lately? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to teach Barlam a lesson. We are. Come on. First off, we find out if he's in. So he's in. Come on. Where are we going? I don't know about that. Oh, well, you're Miss Summer for inflicting two ogdens on me before half past nine on the same morning. Why is it fair game to mock me and our Hilda? Local clowns, aren't we? We've never done hurt anybody. Oh, I'm sorry, Stan. It's just, well, I've not had much sleep. They look all right to me. Oh, not how your missus put it. Mind you, she saw me without me six inches of gun, John. <laughs> well, what about it? I'm not asking you to do it for nothing. I'll see you right. Just, er... Uh... Inkerman Street. Yeah, eh? it won't take you more than ten minutes. Oh. And it's not as if you're not familiar with Inkerman Street, is it? All right, you're on. Great. <laughs> All I need now is a little bike again. Uh -huh. I'll go back 40 years. I started work as a paper lad. Mm. <laughs> and look where you've ended up. Aye. Hello, love. Well, what's Mr. Ogden doing with the papers? Delivering them. Well, did the boys let you down? They didn't. But somebody else did, who put the whole morning out of kilter. Oh, I hope you're not referring to me, Rita. Oh, no. No, to one of me. Other 500 members of staff. Only it wouldn't be accurate to say that I'd let you down, seeing as I'm here. Only two hours late, that's all. No, actually, I'm exactly on time. Half past flaming nine. Oh. How did you arrive at that remarkable conclusion? I worked two hours overtime last night, which means I'm entitled to come in two hours later this morning. Oh, yes. Yes. And vice versa, as a matter of fact. If I come in two hours earlier to do the papers for you in the morning, then I'm entitled to go earlier in the evening. Not two hours, necessarily, but earlier. I tried to tell you yesterday, but you wouldn't listen. Oh, I listened, but I was being charitable. I thought you'd taken temporary leave of your senses. Rita, I have finished being exploited. Mavis, this is a tatty little two-handed cafe and paper shop. Not a flaming shipyard. We don't have demarcation lines and unions and work to rule. It's thee and me, for God's oh, sake. Give and take. Right. Right. Only I've been doing all the giving and you've been doing all the taking. Rita, I don't mind doing favours. I never have. But it's high time you realised I'm not your personal slave. I'm Mr Fairclough's paid employee and such I've got my rights. And I am Mr Fairclough's paid manageress and as such I've got my rights. And one of them is giving uncooperative workers the sack. Aye, aye. What little songbird got out of bed the wrong side this morning, And then? I could do without your childish remarks and all. What's up, love? You look tired. You've got big black rings around your eyes. Drop off. <laughs> Have you uh, been taking my advice? Yes. Hey, well, you got a man. That's a start. Yes. I'm coming in. Come in, Uncle Albert. Nice, bright autumn morning it is, isn't it? A good-to-be-alive morning. Oh, well, I'm glad you think so. Well, of course, you weren't nearly killed with flying glass yesterday, were you? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Couldn't have been very nice for you. And I'm told that you don't want the kids that did it reported to police. Yeah, that's right. I know it's pretty serious, yes, but I reckon... I have reported them. You have not, Uncle Albert. Yes, I have. 
You know, nobody's going to come smashing windows at community centre, nearly killing me at bargain and getting away with it. But I know them. I taught them at Bessie Street. I know you did. And if you ask me, it's misplaced loyalty. And the eldest is only 14. I've been a villain from the time you were old enough to walk. Yeah, but they've never been in trouble with the police. No, they are now. Not before time, either. What makes you so sure? They've only got one way to go. You know, the trouble with you, kid, is that you're too soft. You look at life through rose-coloured specks. And you'd even go and bury your head completely in sand if there was something you didn't even want to see. All right, we know about my deficiencies. We're talking about the lads. Yeah, well, it's the same thing. I look on them as the thugs what they are. You look upon them as poor, badly done two kids that only want a bit of understanding. Yes, and that's a commodity that's in pressure short supply, isn't it? You know, we're all too ready to go bang after the blood of the younger generation, but as if there's some some monstrous mutation that sprung up and got nothing to do with us. Now, look... I mean, look, we don't stand back, do we? And look at the corrupt, collapsing, unprincipled world that we've provided them with and think that that just might have something to do with you it. Know what? You can plant a seed in your allotment, Uncle Al, but you can plant it on rotting muck and it'll grow up into something fine and sturdy. But it's not the same with human beings. They need a, a little more care and attention. Never heard such... What? Them lot need more help, don't they? Smell me. Eh? Oh, she loves shocking people, this one. <laughs> she should be locked up. Who am I shocking? I'm only asking gentleman his opinion of minuit passionel. Passionate nights. Have you had one? Why not? Special offer down at that chemist in Clarence Street. 25p. I told her it can't be much got for that price. Well, it's only a trial size. Hey, go on, what do you think? Well. Yeah, it's very nice, very nice. Well, shall I go back for a bigger bottle or will he be inviting rape? <laughs> well, it might be. Oh, in that case, I'll get two. <laughs> you can have mine if you like, it's in the back. I still prefer me eau de cologne. You know. Oh, she not be a minute, love. Hey, have you seen time? Come on. I've left me money out too, Betty. Well, we're only five minutes late. In my position, I have to set an example, haven't I? In our position. You wear our supervisor for Tilly, not for people. Give some people a bit of authority and they get drunk with power. Yeah, well, Rita gets a bit tetchy, you know. If it's with having two jobs, it's, it's a strain, you know. You've not got to take no notice. Yeah, well, she gets paid for doing two jobs, well paid, and I don't. Well, why don't you put your complaints to her quietly? I mean, I've always found her very reasonable. Oh, not where I'm concerned, she's not. Hey, right in the bottom of my bag. Where's she gone? Hey, listen, yeah. what you want to do, get a proper working arrangement. You know, get it down in writing, get a rotor and stick to it. What's that? Well, do you think she'll agree? Well, oh. Ask her. Can I have a small slice brown, please? But how revolting, what a horrible thing to do. Isn't it? We're all over place. Tater peelings, empty cans, egg cells, a, a blooming lot. You know what we should do? Bring back the cat. I'm serious, mate. It's hard to see what other sort of language these people would understand. Yeah, but they're not these people. They're kids, our kids, our responsibility. I've heard it all before. I made a muck of being a father, you know. My little lad didn't turn out to be no hero. But at least I took the blame on my shoulders. I didn't blame it on society. I mean, I failed my kid, not society. And you know why I failed him? Because it was too flaming soft. That's right, you go and tell him. He won't listen to me. You're not going to let them get away with it again, surely, Kenneth. Yeah, well, Uncle Albert's already reported them to the police, hasn't he, about breaking those windows? Good for you, Albert. I'm glad you did. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't do it instead of listening to him. What have they got against you, Ken? Seems you're the only friend they've got. Oh, I think they think it was me that reported them to the police. Yes, it's a pity you didn't do it, because I don't regret what I did, you know. So they'll just take it out on you. Mm -hmm. They're in lumber, and they're blaming me. It's appalling, it really is. Vicious, and it's the same story everywhere. Are we reverting to the law of the jungle? I don't think it's quite as bad as that yet, Mrs Walker. Yet. I find it all rather chilling. Well, I told Len I'd let him do me a favour and buy me a drink in my dinner hour. Oh, I see. And what about my dinner hour? Oh, you're having it. It's nice and quiet, no customers. So get your little butties out and make yourself a little pot of tea. All right. No, it's not all right, Rita. Supposing I want to go out. <laughs> you can't, can you? Seeing as we don't close at dinner time. Anyway, you went out yesterday. 
I fancy a breath of fresh air. And I fancy being kidnapped by Sasha Distel, but we don't always get what we want in this world, do we, love? Tell you what you can have, though. I've got a couple of fresh cream bilberry tarts up in my fridge. You can have them. I don't like bilberries. Fifty flipping pig? She could at least have made it to quit. Well, it's only two streets, and it took five minutes. Yeah, well, it's not much, but at least it'll buy a bit of mince for the steez. You're not short of a bobber too, are you? Look, where money's concerned, I'm always short of a bobber too. Have you any conception how much it costs to feed you these days? Your appetite doesn't go down as prices go up, you know. Ah, and next time, tell her you want yes. a man's right. It was only Broadley Street and Income Movement uh, Street. Street. So that's why you were so quick to offer. I never offered. She asked me to do her a favour. Yeah, and do one for yourself at the same time. Well, next time she asks you to go up Inkerman Street, you tell her it's two quid. You mean it's all right for me to go around there as long as I get paid? That's right, sir. Cost two quid at buy us best steak, let alone mince. Annie Road, I happen to know that number 19's gone to her daughter's in Bristol for a month. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. 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 Bob Crimson, darling. As ever. Can I bring this poison, please, Annie Love? You know you'll have to start drinking cheaper drinks, you will. So all the fellas keep telling me, but they keep on buying them for me. What's all this about our little Mavis, then, eh? Getting very stroppy. Ah, uh, perhaps it's her age. Thank you. She's the same age as me, give or take a month. I know. And you've been known to be a bit stroppy in all the times, even worse than she is. Listen, we're discussing Mavis, not me. And is it? The board. What am I going to do about it? Well, do you want me to step in? Well, you're the boss. Only when it suits you, I am, yeah. Look, we're talking about little I'm Mavis, going. not a herd of wild bull elephants. You can handle it with one hand behind your back. Not this Mavis, I can't. This model's rebellious, uncooperative, wants work rotors and God knows what. She's been listening to Arthur Scargo. I'm not laughing. I am. Well, little Miss Riley, a militant, it's hysterical. Well, I hope the thoughts of uh, losing your dinner time's profits is just as hysterical. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Because you can't take a hate, mate, if there's nobody in flaming shop. Uh, let me get you something uh, long and cool. It looks to be your sort of drink. Thank you. I'll have a lemonade shandy, please. Right. All right. Have a glass of lemonade shandy, please. <laughs> What I mean is, we always hedge ourselves in with a million reasons why we shouldn't move. Well, I mean, in America, people shift around a lot more. Oh, yeah, I know, but it's not as if Emily and me have got kids settled at a school or old folks we can't leave or a marvellous business we can't give up. Yeah, well, you can, I mean, you could always sell yours and buy another anyway, yeah, couldn't you? Yeah, well, that goes for the house, too. I mean, we're fond of it. No, it'd be more accurate to say that we are used to it. And now they would pretend it's our ideal home. Well, where would you go if you went? Oh, Devon, Cornwall. Cotswolds, anywhere where it's green and pleasant and gentle. Mm. The lakes, anywhere where people have got time. Think you'll ever do it? Well, pack up and go. Don't suppose so. Now, come on, love, what are you playing at? I'm not playing at anything, Mr. Fairclough. You're hanging out for a rise, is that it? No, Rita knows perfectly well what it is. It's not money, it's just a fair deal. Ah, so she's been telling me. She's also been telling me how bolchy you've been about yeah, it. Well, I tried talking to her yesterday, but she wouldn't listen. Oh, now, come on, love. Turning up hours late, laying down laws, conditions, not opening the shop at dinner time. It's not on, really, is it? You don't think I'd like doing that, do you? That's what I don't understand, a principal girl like you. Yeah, well, maybe that's why I've landed myself in this situation. I mean, it's easy to get taken advantage of when you're somebody like me, but I, I'm just at the end of my tether, and that's final. Look, just tell me why it is you think you're not getting a square deal. Well, it's going to sound disloyal. And all of it is my business. I'd like to know what's wrong with my employees, what their grievances are. Now, come on, what's it all about? What's it in aid of? Well, I sometimes have to work overtime at night, making up the papers and, and tidying up that sort of thing, while she rushes off to get a head on or to an audition or something. Oh. And then coming in early in the mornings to do the papers again when she's been working, working, singing, I mean, like she wanted me to do this morning, only I wouldn't. The half past six to <laughs> How often's that, then? It depends how many singing dates she's got, sometimes three or four times a week. As often as that? <laughs> but surely not the same week that you're doing the working late of yes, the evening. Yes, well, I mean, that's when she wants me to come in early, isn't it? 
So sometimes you're working a what, a 12 hour day? And then I'm left to cope on me own while she goes off to buy stuff for her frocks to have a fitting or, or goes to rehearse with Mr. Bishop. She must be making a bomb, apart from what I'm paying her here. Well, I hadn't thought of it from that aspect. Does she uh, slip you anything for the extra work you do? I told you, Mr. Fairclough, it's not the money I'm after. Oh, Mavis, you know what you are, don't you? A troublemaker. No, a mug. A real old mug. I just want to talk to you, Kevin. Have to meet me, mate? Yeah, well, it won't take long. Quite simply, Kevin, I'm just up to here with these silly games that you play. What are you talking about, Mr. Barlow? You know very well what I'm talking about. No, I suggest that you and your mates knock it off before we all do something we regret. So no more kicking on my door and knocking over dustbins. I still don't know what you're talking about. How old were you, Kevin, when you were in my class at Bessie Street? Nine. You were a little villain then, as far as I remember. Yeah, I used to make me sit front of class. Yeah, where I could keep an eye on you. How old are you now? Fifteen? Next month. Yeah, well, you should know a bit better now, shouldn't you? If you say so. Do you know where all this will end, Kevin, if you don't change your ways? Borstal first, and then probably prison. All right, you're getting your kicks now, giving me a bad time, but who's next? And what's next? It's a vicious circle, Kevin. It starts with breaking windows and kicking over dustbins, and it ends up with a mugging or something worse. So break that circle, Kevin. Break it now. Before it's too late. Hello? An hour is at four o'clock, and it's only two minutes to, but I was ready, and I thought I'd like a bit of fresh air, so I thought I'd walk down. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had company. That's all right. He's just going. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Remember what I said. Was that one of the... Yes, young thug all set to turn into a grown-up thug. Oh, I never thought I'd hear you sound as cynical as that. Kid. I'm not cynical, Mrs. Walker. I'm angry. Angry because I know him and I can't get through to him. I'm powerless. We all are. We can see what's happening and there's nothing we can do about it. But you're so good at communicating mm. with people. Not now. Not with kids like that. Well, if you're all set, Mrs. Walker, I've got another yes, job at 25. Yes, yes, of course, dear. I'm sure if you gave him sound advice, some of it's bound to stick. Oh, I wonder. It is a vendetta, isn't it, Ken? No, Hilda, I shan't be using your stand services again. Oh, well, just think on. Next time he wants to pay the proper rate for the job. This morning's chos won't happen again. <laughs> Till next time. Well, if there is a next time, I don't suppose Stan would mind helping me out, would you? Especially if it was round Inkerman Street. In fact, I shall keep Inkerman Street just for you. <laughs> well, you sort my man out. She's not speaking to me now. I had a word with you. Marked her card, did you? No. What did you do? <coughs> I told her I thought she was dead right. <laughs> You've been taking that girl for a mug for months, you know. It's a wonder she stood it for so long. Stood what, exactly? Working all the hours, God sends. Is that what she told you? She told me how much she was doing and how little you were doing. I only work a 23 rot now a day, that's all. Yes, but not for me, darling. All for your own benefit. Off, out singing every night. Well, if you think she's that hard done by, why don't you give her a rise? She'll not say no. I think she deserves one. Only I'm not giving it to her. You can afford it. Not as much as you can with all the work you're getting in. Gee, blab her mouth missing out out, did she? Don't forget it was you that asked me to have a word with her. Where do we stand now, then? It's not money she wants. It's just appreciation. You give her a few more quid extra a week, and she won't think she's being taken advantage of. I like that. Me give her a few more quid. It's your shop. Ah, but it's you that's giving her all the extra work, isn't it? Supposing I said no? Well, yes, my love, you're dead right, aren't you? Only I would reconsider, if I were you, as to whether you want to keep the job as manageress. To say nothing of the rent-free flat that goes with it. That's it, darling. 
Let me know. You've no proof it was our Kevin. It was Kevin, Mrs Marsh. How do you know? Mr Marsh, it was Kevin. He was in my house just a couple of minutes before. And that's another thing you'd no right to do, taking him into your house, threatening him again. Again? And uh, yesterday. And you'd no right to do that either. You're not a teacher any longer, you know. Look, I wasn't threatening him. I was talking to him, trying to talk some sense into him. Do you approve of them behaving like that, Kevin and Bernard? Like what? We've only your word for it that they've done anything. Smashing windows, causing wanton damage, and generally behaving like hooligans. Look, we, we know they're a bit wild, but I mean, most lads are, unless they're sick. I mean, the good lads at heart. The good lads at home. You've not seen the community centre, my backyard, and my car. What are you complaining about? There's young tykes round here, carve you up, and your car. Are you suggesting I should be thankful that your sons have let me off so lightly? More than you've done for them, but you poured them to the police. I didn't. Well, somebody did do, and you're the only one that's accusing them of anything. Yeah, well, I'm wasting my time, obviously. I didn't go to the police. I mean, I think I should have, but I didn't. Oh, and there's just one more thing. Trying to hide the truth about Kevin and Bernard isn't going to help them, you know. They need controlling, and they need it now. Aye, aye, any control to do round here, I'll do it. And you keep your hands off my kids. Pardon? In here, yesterday, you hit them. You they the told us. Well, I'm very sorry to have to say this, Mr. Marsh, but your children are liars as well as everything else. Hey, you can't say that about no, Alan. Don't you think Mr. you are? Nurse, it's all. You better me. use it. Get out quick okay. and don't come back. I'm going. I'm going, Mr. Marsh. I'm going because there's no point in staying. No point at all. You'll have to talk to him, Doug. I'm going for the point. Don't do it, Kev. Ah, oh, shut it and keep me. Right. Let's teach that bar lamb to rot and will leave us alone. Rita's first anniversary is not one to be forgotten next, but not for any romantic reasons.